Hey, welcome back. It's your man Wise. And today we have a great video. We are going to react and discuss Dalton Mayer, Super Mayor, Tiffany Henyer. I have Celeste Duffy in the building with me again. Y'all know we do this on a week to week basis. So give me one second. Let me bring Celeste back into the video here. So I'm smaller. And there we go. Hey, Celeste, how you doing today? Hey, Wes, how are you? This is great. You're right. We're back for our, our, our weekly kind of recap, kind of get together and see what's happening, what has happened over the week. So this is great. Yeah. So Tiffany Henyard, she's under FBI investigation now. It's a whole mess out there right now. And uh, it looks like and sounds like things are a whole heck of a lot worse than what we even were led to believe from the beginning. So um, I'm 100% here for it. So we are going to react to a video that I found, and I want to make sure that I give this young lady her flowers right now. This is from Drama Verified by Nikki. Uh, if you haven't already, please go over to her channel, check her out, go subscribe to her channel. She's doing good work over there. Give me one second, let me slide the video in. And in the meantime, before we do that, like, share, subscribe to the channel, drop me a comment down below. I appreciate all the love and support. And make sure y'all go over to Celeste Duffy's channel, Celeste underscore Duffy. Give her a sub. Go check out her content. She's doing some great work over there as well. Without further ado, let's go. It's about to go down. If you want the truth, tune in. Because I got the tea. With the receipt. Go tell that. The grown-up thing would be for her to resign. Just get out of here. Leave town. But she's not going to do that. You have disgraced this entire village and also disrespected each and every one of us. This meeting is an attempt for um, this legislative board to save Dalton. This has to stop. She cannot continue to intimidate and, 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 and gangster her way through this. We're not giving up because we refuse to let um, Tahoe Tiffany take our community. The Board of Trustees has repeatedly asked for financial information uh, that we feel is entitled and has been denied that information. Uh, so we feel that we need to get intervention from somebody that can uh, can in, that can force this kind of uh, action. Who are you asking for, for for that intervention? What bodies? Uh, we're asking the FBI, state's attorney, attorney general, and Cook County Sheriff's Office. If you haven't seen my video, Dalton Mayor Tiffany Henyard misusing taxpayer money on lavish lifestyle, check it out because it'll catch you up if you're not already familiar with this cycle mayor. All right, so let's get into it. Tiffany Henyard is accused of spending taxpayer money on luxury trips and her personal charity. She also spent $1 million of taxpayer money on local police that she uses as her personal bodyguards. And it's being reported that Tiffany Henyard uses these same police officers to harass her enemies. Now, I came across this court filing that accuses this mayor of weaponizing the police to silence residents. And the New York Post is reporting that a resident believes their home was sprayed with bullets at the order of Tiffany Henyard during a bitter feud between them last summer. It's being reported that two cars belonging to tenants of former Village of Dalton trustee Valeria Stubbs, who is also a retired member of the Cook County Sheriff's Office, were riddled with at least nine bullets in July of 2023. And the police aren't taking this incident serious because their alliance is with Tiffany Henyard. Now, this drive-by was caught on camera. Take a look and let me know what you think in the comments. So what's all the beef about? Well, at the time, Valeria Stubbs had accused Tiffany Henyard of hiring a registered S offender as a code enforcement officer and publicly demanded he be removed from his position and called for the mayor to step down. These are our tax dollars. My taxes is over $20,000 a year for the, to live in the village of Dalton. And you telling me that I don't have a right to say what go on with my tax dollars. I don't have a voice. That's unheard of. And she's violating our First Amendment right. She needs to step down 
and let somebody else run for that office you know, I, I, that can do the job because obviously she can't do it and she didn't do it as a trustee. You know why Every, else she need to step everything down? Everything she's doing. She was living in South everything Holland when that she she's ran doing on 173 she Street in South Holland. Is what she stood against as a trustee for the village of Dalton. She was living here you no have um, <laughs> what's his name, Lavelle Redmond. You know, uh, an ex sex offender. Okay, that's fine and dandy. Take him and put him in public work somewhere if you're going to give him a second chance. Don't have him going out here knocking on doors to resident houses with a, um, a squad car with lights and a badge. You're so concerned about the residents out here and employment. She just had a job fair. Why not give some of those jobs to the residents that live here that had a stake in here and as opposed to her, res uh, her uh, family members, you know, and to an uh, ex-sex offender. That's unheard of. And it's wow. Wow. You know, what's, you know what's upsetting? These are good black people. When you look at the people that are in this city council, and obviously the people that are speaking out against her, these are good people. And she is dogging them out. But... It's unfortunate. I think you mentioned this. They voted for her. They voted for this. And they voted for the ideology, young black woman. They asked for this. And they probably feel like now they bit off a little more than they could chew. <laughs> oh, they definitely bit off more than they could chew. She is showing them the business. She is running through that town like she is really like Nino Brown. I actually think that the um the costuming was, you know, we thought it was cosplay. I think she's like, no, I'm I'm really going to live this. I'm really going to do it. Cause it seems as though, I mean, she has made the police department her own um personal goon squad and, and thug squad. I saw a report um, where it is alleged that the police department, she's um, paying them in the way of overtime. So if you work on her detail, all the other police get their 80 hours a week pay, except the police that are on her detail. The police that are on her detail can then get overtime. And uh, I believe one of them was even being paid in one pay period up to 300 hours, which almost seems mathematically impossible that he could have worked this 300 hours. And I believe the price tag for that, again, on the um, residents of Dalton and, and uh, the village here was $13,000 in one pay period. So she is rewarding uh, people who are acting possibly outside of their official and legal capacity as goon squads, because I'm pretty sure that as um, sworn officers, they're not supposed to be doing drive-bys <laughs> or, or an intimidating uh, residence for a shakedown. I also saw in a report that there were some businesses, some people that had small businesses. In fact, um, uh, at least in this report, all of them were Black. And they were saying that because they did not directly donate to her campaign, they could not get their businesses permitted. Yeah. So those people who had businesses that were running had to um, put their business on pause to try and go through a permit process that for some reason for them does not seem to, to work or, or yield anything. And then for the uh, others who were trying to open uh, businesses they couldn't they can't get it done so un unless you make a direct payment to her campaign and let's let's all remember campaign uh money is very different you don't necessarily if you lose a campaign you don't have to give that money back now there may be some restrictions on how you spend it but you don't ever give it back no. that's still your money in your coffers so this this whole extortion and shakedown <laughs> oh gosh of of the residents of the village and of dalton uh, i think um they she she tiffany came to show them she said mess around and found out and those people mess around and now they are really finding out yeah and it's it's one of those things where i mean unfor it's unfortunate but we gotta stop voting based off of identity we gotta stop it we we're so big into tokenism in the black community that if they just toss us a token, we're like, yeah, yeah, we got, I seen somebody in one of the comment section 
they were upset because we were looking at things at policy. And we're like, we're just looking at the policies and saying, you know what, we're going to vote accordingly. And this guy in the comment section was like, but that's a black woman. You're not going to vote. Like, no, we're past. Hey, we've already failed for the hope and chain and let's vote for the black guy. We've already done that. It didn't work out for us. We're no longer doing that just because they throw us a, throw a black face at us. And we already know all skin folk ain't kin folk. So we cannot continue to fall for that. And the people of Dalton or the village and the people that live in the villages, I guess it's Dalton and whatever those villages are, are around that. They're finding out you can't continue to do this because if you recall, when the white man was the uh, mayor, they had a $7 million surplus. Uh -huh. They put the sister in there and they got a $2 million deficit. That is a $9 million turnaround. That is crazy. Well, he probably bought the township and, and the city some savings by not having to have a goon squad. This goon squad seems to be extremely expensive. So, you know, that in and of itself probably saved, uh, saved some money. And he was able to um, um, make a little bit of a surplus. And, and, and God bless him for doing that. I understand he was the mayor for something like 32 years. I mean, he'd been there. He truly served. He'd built the town. And apparently his salary was because each year he kept getting um, sort of cost of living raises and the natural uh, raises that come when you've been on a job for 32 years. It wasn't him just saying, I want this money and I'm not, you know, working for it. But I, I agree with you. I, I and, and to the gentleman in the comment, first of all, thank you. Uh, very much for commenting. We want to hear from you. We want to hear from everyone. And as far as voting, it, listen, no one is telling you you can't vote for a woman who's a black woman. Go ahead. Do that. Enjoy that. You have the right to do that. And I and and, and wise and people of, of good conscience uh, will certainly defend and uphold your right to do that. However, that doesn't mean we have to do that or I have to do that. I don't want to speak for anyone else. But we definitely recognize your right to do that. And if that's important to you, if that's your value, you should go and vote your value the same way I am going to vote my values. That may not be a value for me. I may have other things that are more of a priority for me. And that's how I'll vote. But that's the reason we have the vote, so that you can go in and determine what means something to you. And if that's what means something to you, then go ahead and pull the lever. I agree. Let's keep the video going should come as no surprise that after all the shenanigans, the FBI is now looking into allegations of misconduct, including abuse of power and corruption. The investigation follows the decision by the Illinois Attorney General to shut down Tiffany Henyard's charity. And just when you think this mayor can't get any more corrupt, she's also being accused of shutting down businesses that won't donate to her re-election campaign. Well, one of the residents had enough, and he went to the FBI after the mayor shut down his trucking business because he refused to renew a $3,500 political contribution to her party. Did the FBI agents you talked to seem serious about yes, your, very serious. your concerns? Very, very serious. Very. Lawrence Gardner owns a U-Haul rental and trucking business in South Suburban Dalton and says he went to the FBI several months ago frustrated that the village of Dalton would not renew his business license. Gardner says he's been harassed and his business raided and shut down by Dalton police, he believes because he refused to make a donation to a civic event sponsored by Dalton Mayor Tiffany Henyard. And I talked to a couple of agents and I explained them what was going on. I gave them all my paperwork to show them what was happening in court and what was happening in Dalton. And they told me they was investigating and they would be in touch with me. Gardner is one of six people who confirmed to Fox 32 that they've been interviewed by the FBI, ranging from Dalton business owners to a former village employee and at least one public official. I've heard rumors that say, hey, I'm on the wrong team. Dwayne Wood has been trying to renew the business license for his restaurant for nearly a year. While he has not talked to the FBI, he believes he can't get approved because he's provided catering to several Dalton trustees who are engaged in a political fight with Henyard. I think I've been just targeted because of my association affiliation with a certain group of people. You know, I had the trustees. I've, I've cooked for the trustees. 
And in a lawsuit filed by a Dalton Towing Company, the owner alleges their business license has been held up because, quote, George's Towing's refusal to support or contribute to Henyard's political campaign. And this cycle mayor is also punishing business owners for talking to news reporters about her. Mark. Hey, Celeste, if this was a white man doing this, this would be national news on CNN, MSNBC. It would be everywhere. Charlemagne and those dudes on The Breakfast Club would be talking about it. It would be everywhere. The white man is keeping black people from doing business. Why do we not hear any of these people talking about this? These are black people, business owners, small business owners, which is the bedrock of this nation. And this lady is in here messing with everybody's money. All of these folks, they talk about black folks. We want generational wealth. How do, this is how you build generational wealth through these types of organizations and obviously through home ownership. And we got a sister in there, or at least so she says, stopping black folks progress. This is awful, man. This it's is shameful. awful. It's shameful. It's absolutely shameful. And, you know, there is, there is with all things, um, you know, God has a way of working even in the worst situations. One thing that I do think that is happening as a result, not just of Mayor Henyard, but of um, some of the L's that we're talking about that people are taking, particularly black women as of late, is that we are dispelling the illusion. I think that there has been an illusion because of our history um, that people don't particularly understand well, that black people are generally highly qualified, good, well-intended people who have a heart for other black and, and downtrodden sort of marginalized people. And that if only they would be given a position of power, if only they could be put in a, in a position of leadership that all of, of the ills and the, the complaints and the woes that uh, people experience would go away because these are the people who would know you, who would understand your plight and who would use uh, government or use their leadership positions to sort of um, take that back and, and become a, 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 be a bulwark against harm for you. And what we're finding out, which is, is, is wonderful news, is that black people are just people and that every good and bad thing that is that any other person is capable of so are we and and getting past that delusion is i think eventually i don't i don't know what it will do for uh the villages and and, and the folks in in dalton but I think eventually that's a good thing. I think we will be able at some point if we can now break the so glass ceiling of blackness that we will be able to actually get to be able to see people as people and judge them properly by their deeds, Absolutely. not their look and not what they say but by what they do when they have the opportunity to demonstrate what they demonstrate. And I think coming out of that illusion, I feel terrible that the folks in Dalton, although they, they have to take some responsibility for this, mm -hmm. I feel terrible that they're, oh, I mean, it seems almost like they're being held captive. These well, are free no people that are it. being it, they are. Held, held captive by one tiny little Nino Brown woman. It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> it just is amazing. Yeah. But it goes to show, and I don't, you know, this is a totally different issue, but I just want to, for 30 seconds, uh, look over at Haiti. And you're seeing almost a similar situation in that you've got these folks, so the, the government has completely fallen apart and, and gangs have, uh, I assume we're already there, are ruling the streets and, and, and have captured what's left of the government and ruling that now you've got a man, apparently the largest uh, guy who's who's the, the, the largest gang who's most in charge is somebody named Barbecue. And the, the, the residents of an entire nation are being held captive to a man named Barbecue. And this goes to show people should pay attention to that because it can happen to anyone anywhere when you throw off your citizenry and you throw off your responsibilities of the citizenry because you're trying to show allegiance to race and to other 
very superficial ideas. Nothing good comes from that. Wow. Well said. 100% right. I am. Uh, when I first watched uh, The Brother Branch, I was like, he's the more I see these stories, the more I see what's going on over there in Haiti. And some of the other stories that I hear of what's going on in the continent, I don't know. And not to go completely off track, but even over in the Gambia, they are uh, unaliving black Americans that are going over there trying to find their, you know, trying to find their way out there on the continent. And there's been a multitude of stories that have come out of brothers and sisters from here in America going over there thinking that things are going to be better. And they're not coming back home uh, the same way they went over there. And it's unfortunate. And when I first heard the brothers speak on some of these things, I'm like, but the more I see, I'm like, I get it. And I understand exactly where he's coming from. And it's really making me like, look at, look at this in a completely different way because now there's no excuse. We can't say, well, if we get the opportunity to be in power, we'll be better. We have examples and we have receipts. See Tiffany Henyard in the village of Dalton. It's awful. It's yeah. our fault. It's our fault for being under a insane illusion. That is that anybody who's black has your experience, has your mind, has your heart, has your principles and has your values. And they don't ever, they're never required to demonstrate that to you before you hand them the keys to the kingdom. That's foolishness. That is absolute foolishness. We've been a foolish people and we are reaping. What is, what is the saying? Um, you play stupid games, you get stupid prizes. Absolutely. Controversy in South Suburban Dalton. Two popular bars shut down by police just hours after the owners talked to Fox 32. They just rushed in here, put police at the front of the door like they was doing a raid on the drug house or something. A team of Dalton police officers raided and shut down Pablo's Bar and Cafe and Rinky's Bar and Cafe, both located on Sibley about a block apart. Everything going peacefully. Nothing going on. It's like 10 police cars came in. And they start pushing customers from here. And he said, if you don't leave, we're going to lock you up. Employees and owners say it's part of an ongoing campaign of harassment by Dalton Mayor Tiffany Henyard that is costing jobs and money. Their business here. licenses have been stripped by Dalton, but they've continued to operate with a state license. I have like over 23 employees. They work from the local township. Now, end of the day, all the employees, they're going to lose them job. It's ridiculous. We all have mouths to feed. We all have kids. Uh, they're not giving us no explanation. On Monday, we visited both Rinkies and Pablo's to ask about allegations their licenses were being held up for political reasons. Then last evening, we broke the story that FBI agents have questioned at least a half dozen people, including business owners, a former Dalton employee, and an elected official as part of an investigation into Mayor Henyard. Less than two hours after our story aired, police raided the two bars. Someone seen you go in there, and then two hours after your story airs, that police are at both of these establishments. Dalton trustee Tammy Brown says she believes the raids are meant to send a warning to others not to talk. And she believes there's a reason so many Dalton businesses are having trouble getting their licenses renewed. I'm sure that they were asked to donate, make a donation, and most likely they didn't make a donation. So you don't get a chance to stay open if you don't pay, pay the queen's ransom. And on top of all that, the bills aren't being paid and the bank threatened to repossess more than a dozen village vehicles, including police cars, because lease payments were missed. The village owed more than $30,000 for this skating rink and didn't pay until a lawyer sent a threatening letter. Records show a company that repaved Dalton streets in 2022 sent bills for more than a year on a $378,000 balance. With interest, the bill has now grown to more than $427,000. Last month, a bank threatened to repossess more than a dozen village vehicles, including police cars, because lease payments were missed. We have vendors calling us every day for non-payment. A lot of these been vendors we don't even know are doing the work. I wanted to uh, bring to your attention last night's board meeting that the board of trustees voted not to pay tree companies uh, that is servicing our area. Um, despite what people may think or may know is they still showed up today to work and they're helping the residents 
get back on their feet, cutting down their trees. They never give a reason why they just, we're not going to pay you. The tree trimming company's owner says he does work for several suburbs, but the dysfunction in Dalton is unique and costly to taxpayers. With all the compounding interest, their balance as of this coming Monday is going to be $401,380.73 in rolling. And in February, Tiffany Hinyard went on Facebook Live and promised a $1 million giveaway. And that $1 million turned out to be taxpayer money. Listen, this mafia mayor clearly has no respect for the residents, and she thinks this is all a joke. Because even while being investigated by the FBI, she is launching her own podcast where she plans to talk about all the allegations that stacked against her. So I heard you guys were looking for me. If you're looking for Tiffany Hinyard, press the subscribe button. Yes, you. Press the subscribe button. So, what do you want me to talk about? This or that? This and that? Or me? Tiffany A. Hinyard. You pick. Put your questions in the comments. And I'm going to answer all questions. Just be respectful. If you disrespectful, I'm not going to answer it. Because remember, I got the tea with the receipts. Matter of fact, if you want the tea, get it from me. <laughs> Go tell that. Yo, this mayor is a clown. And she really don't give a damn about what she did to that town or those residents. And that podcast will most likely end up being evidence in court because she dumb. I feel like the judge who allowed Tiffany Hinyard to remain as mayor, even though the people wanted her gone, needs to be held accountable for his decision. And honestly, as people, we need to stop being so passive with this damn government. Our hard-earned money pays their salaries, and if we want to kick them out of office for stealing from us, then that's what it is. It's time to change the system to where it works for the people and not the politicians. Anyway, let's continue to share and talk about this story until the people in Dalton get justice and Tiffany Hinyard gets handcuffs. Because it's the year of lock up the corruption and throw away the key. Unbelievable. Honey, Unbelievable. she is Tony Soprano. <laughs> to, to make her a gabagool sandwich and, and let her go. That is, she's got a Tony Soprano shakedown operation going on in, in Dalton. It is amazing. Wow. <laughs> that's exactly what it is like listening to it and listening to what she's doing it reminds me of the godfather or uh casino or something one of those mob movies from back in the day uh goodfellas <laughs> that's what this reminds me of you gotta you hey we you gotta pay for protection if not you gotta worry about us it's not outsiders that protect no protection from us <laughs> this is awful yeah, yes, this seems crazy. This seems absolutely crazy. I will say one thing. Uh, this is if you know, and I don't know how many how much more evidence we need, but this is certainly evidence of why the best hedge against corruption is limited government. The less you employ the government to do on your behalf, the less likely you get people like this, grifters and such, who want to stand over the big a pile of money, the, the daddy warbucks pile of money. Uh, get there is a real reason to limit what government does for you. And when people say that, they say, "Oh, you don't care about the poor, and you don't care about helping people." No, the founders knew. They understood that whenever you can assemble money and power and concentrate it in one place, is attractive. Now, it's attractive sometimes to people who have good conscience and goodwill, but it is definitely always attractive to give to grifters and people who are of, of bad will. So if you want to keep your government pure and you want to make it unattractive to the kind of people that would abuse it, the best way to do that is limit the amount of money and power, which would mean limit the functions that the government carries out. So this story, as terrible as it is, and as shameful as it is, is certainly an excellent lesson. It is a wonderful reminder for all of us to realize why a limited government is beneficial. Wow, I would agree. It just, it, it really breaks my heart to see these brothers and sisters out there that probably have worked their lives to open these businesses. They put their probably home equity up to open these businesses. They put their life savings up to open these businesses. And this lady is playing gangster games with them. It's unfortunate. And so many of us, and you've had so many people say, 
you know, it's the white man keeping us down. It's the white man. And here we have a situation where it is the complete polar opposite of the white man. This is a woman that looks like you and I, who they told us would be better if they were in charge. And she's causing a lot of harm to these people. We don't know the damage that has been done to the businesses. We know about what's going on with the city, but we don't know the damage of each individual business that's been shut down. That one brother's business has been shut down for a year. Mm-hmm. A year, a year of lost revenue. For most people, that's bankruptcy for most organizations out there. There's no telling what type of loans or whatever it is that he has going on that he probably has to pay to even keep, you know, keep the doors open. Who knows? It's awful, man. She, it's really. And he won't get his employees back. They're going to have this complete destabilization. They'll have to leave all of his vendors that he may have had relationships with. They're going to move on to other people because people can't, you know, they just can't do it. But that. Yeah, you. it is. It is absolutely destabilized. And, and once it's destabilized, it'll run its course and it'll probably go out of business. And that is hateful. It's absolutely hateful. It really is. And you never know what he put up to get that business. Because a lot of times people will put, you know, the equity up in their home or something to, you know, purchase a business. Uh, because we obviously know that that's a, you know, it's a good way to build wealth. And obviously, you know, your home is the number one way we build wealth. And then you take the resources that your home generates for you, that equity there, and that gives you the ability to purchase something like what he purchased. And it's unfortunate that because he didn't want to give a campaign donation, you know, he's being, you know, extorted the way he is. I mean, it's, that's basically what this is. It's just full-fledged extortion. And I hope the FBI rain rain down on her heart she needs to go to prison she and she needs to do a lot of time if if all of these allegations are true and they do a full-fledged investigation and it comes out that it is true she needs to go they need the federal because this would be a federal crime right is that is that accurate this well, be federal? conspiracy for the drive-by ought to be enough to keep <laughs> having the police do drive-bys this is yeah. crazy yeah this is crazy I've, I've, I don't think I've ever heard of anything like this, not in the modern era anyway. You know, this is the first that I've ever heard anything remotely close to this. Wow. All right, we'll wrap the video. Like, share, <laughs> subscribe to the channel. It's unfortunate. Drop me a comment down below. If you live in that area, I would def- definitely love to hear from you. If you live in, in the Dalton area somewhere and you see this, Drop us a comment, man. I would love to hear some insider information and and what's really going on from the inside. I know it's one thing we see, you know, from the outside looking in and we see the uh, the, the news reports and so forth and so on. But um, I'd like to, I'd be very interested to hear how bad this is really affecting the citizens of the village adult, because I'm sure it's worse than what we're actually seeing because we're only getting we're probably just scratching the surface of what's actually going on. So again, like, share, subscribe to the channel. Drop me a comment down below. Go over to Celeste Duffy's uh, channel as well. Celeste underscore Duffy. Go over there, check her content out, subscribe to her channel and uh, tell them about the book real quick before we get out of here. Uh, The book is The Ask Backwards Way to Move Forward. It's a tongue in cheek guide to poverty and misery. I say I wrote the blueprint. If you want to know for sure how to guarantee that you'll be poor and and miserable, that's it. The Ask Backwards Way to Move Forward. Outstanding. The book is good. I'm enjoying it. I'm almost done. I've been busy over the weekend, but I will be done if not today, tomorrow. But it is phenomenal. And I'm sharing it. My kids are going to read this book. They need to. Both of them. They need to read this. I told my wife, you got to share this with some of the sisters at the church. They need to see this. Some of the brothers, some of the young brothers, they need to see it too. Mm-hmm. This is, it's, man, great job, man. Phenomenal work. Thank Phenomenal. you. Thank you. And I, I have a particular interest in young people who are just starting their life and have not made uh, bad decisions of looking at the book so they can understand what the consequences are of those decisions. One, financially, but even more than that, personally and spiritually as well. Absolutely. Awesome. Awesome. All righty. Hey, keep God first in your life. America first. And we'll catch up with you all next time. Peace.